I'm guessing though, you were probably pretty popular in college, right? Because you probably had the hookups for some, for some fine beer, if you know what I mean. Aloha, Be More Brew Crew members. Welcome back to the bar. We are here in Hale Thorpe, Maryland, just outside of Baltimore at the Heavy Seas Tap Room. And I am joined by craft brew royalty, Miss Carolyn Sisson, <laughs> who is going to be having a beer with me today to discuss Heavy Seas, all the amazing things going on. You guys are producing some amazing award-winning beers, and I am excited for this conversation. Yeah, likewise. You guys are the OGs here in the Baltimore and Maryland area. You were the original, you were the first, you were the largest. So here I am, super humble, just thankful that you're taking time out of your day to talk to us. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah. it's my pleasure, sincerely. Cool. So you have generously poured us two beers. <laughs> two. I let you choose the beers. That's, That's the way right. it's always gonna be. Yeah. So yeah. what did you pour for us here today? So I have two beers for us. I have our Hazy Cannon, which is our Hazy IPA. So mm -hmm. hopefully you and our listeners are already familiar with beers like Loose Cannon, oh, yeah. Tropic Cannon, um, Hazy Cannon is kind of newer to the brand. Uh, we started brewing Hazy Cannon, I think about two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an awesome Hazy IPA. So I figured we would start with that. And then we can shift over to the second beer, which is our Blonde Ale, Bodacious Blonde. It's definitely a beer we're focusing on this year. So I we had to give it some love today. Yep, absolutely. So let's start with the Hazy. All right, let's go with the Hazy. And Cheers. Cheers. I may or may not have already had this fine. This is my this is my kind of one of my go-tos right now. Oh, that is so good. And I'm yeah, like a you... PA girl. I know, you know, in the beer world, um, people tend to gravitate towards a style. I mean, I love IPAs, so this is just this is like I said, my go-to right now. The hazies are having a moment. Oh, they're yeah, they're popular. It's it's the thing right now it's like yeah. a popular thing to do yeah and we're very pleased with how this one turned out so yeah so actually one of our fan questions i'm going to jump ahead a little That's bit good. right so someone asked me to ask you could we be expecting a quad cannon anytime soon because uh, you guys just pounded the market with your awesome triple cannon yeah so obviously we uh we brew a lot of ipas loose cannon we kind of amped it up with our double cannon and then triple cannon our newest uh limited release which just it was uh, great two weeks ago we reviewed it and it was fantastic yeah that beer we could not be happier with and that that ranks at 12 percent abv um but very well hidden so yeah oh, we, we've, so smooth yeah we've had uh we've had some chats about how do we you know go bigger um i don't know anything that's at pretty before. radical going quad is pretty radical yeah but so we so yeah. every year we do an anniversary beer and usually for those beers we we kind of go all out yeah. Um, there, I don't think we've brewed one that has been under 10%. So who knows, maybe for 29, stay tuned. It could be, you know, your, your quad IPA. <laughs> awesome. All right. We'll see. So you are the brand manager for heavy seas. You are like the keeper of the kingdom for this brand. Right. So tell me a little bit. I know you are extremely busy all the time, just from us setting up this interview and yeah. I get it, but like what goes in to a typical day for you, a typical week? It, every day, every week is different. Um, I So basically my job is I oversee our marketing. I also oversee our tap room. Um, so anything marketing related, hospitality related, events, festivals, um, I'm kind of overseeing. And it's a lot of fun. I was a marketing major. Um, so marketing has been just where my career has been all my life. Um, and I'm obviously very passionate about this company, this industry, but uh, every day, every week is different. This week, uh, I had an, a reception in Annapolis. It was the tri-industry legislation reception. So members from the Breweries Association of Maryland, the Wineries Association, Distillers, uh, we basically hosted a reception for state legislation to kind of, you know, get- Sounds them. horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. but that was, that was my Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we had an event here in the tap room. So I was here for a little bit for that. Um, so every day is something different. Um, you probably meet a ton of fun people, right? Both I, in industry and just here in the tap room. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I love my job. <laughs> I can't. If there was a dream job to have, I mean, I hope my boss isn't watching, but yeah, I would love to be a brand manager for heavy seats. No, it's a lot of fun. And, um, like I said, there's, 
because of what I do, I do oversee a lot of our marketing. So the social media, our website, anything digital, you know, that's my team that's responsible for that. Um, but events, you know, we do a lot of festivals in the spring and the fall time. We do events here in our tap room all the time. I mean, it's just every day is different, but it's, it's just, it is very people oriented. I interact with customers and fans of ours all the time, which I love. Um, so yeah, just love it. So how did you get started? Like, as a little girl, were you wandering around helping your dad out with the business? I'm guessing you were probably wandering around a lot of breweries and stuff like that as a little girl. And eventually, like, how did you get into working for Heavy Seas? Yeah, so I was five years old when my father, Hugh Sisson, started this company. Um, so I really wasn't part of Heavy Seas until after I graduated college. Um, and like I said, I was a marketing major, so I knew I wanted to pursue something in marketing, but I think it was kind of like your average 21 graduating from school, right. you know, trying to figure out what to I'm, do. I'm guessing though, you were probably pretty popular in college, right? Because you probably had the hookups for some, for some fine beer, if you know what I mean. So my senior year, I was 21. So that was like, bring some beer back to school with me. Why not? And right. Then, yeah. yeah. And because we were also in college, the only thing we could drink is what we could afford, which wasn't much. So when I got to oh, yeah, right. some craft beer, it was... With the last great. name Sisson, I'm sure like you had a fine pick of anything at the brew house. when you, Of course, when you turned 21. Of course. No, but definitely. Not until you were 21, yes. for sure. Yes. Right? And that actually, I can say, is true. Because, you know, this is a business. We, we're responsible. So, yeah. Exactly. And you have this beautiful tap house here. You do. You guys throw some amazing, wonderful events. I've been lucky enough to come through for the tours, which honestly is one of the best tours that you can find in the Baltimore area. Yeah. So I, I've told people in prior videos, the tour, it's an amazing value because it's very cheap, very affordable. It's under 10 bucks. Yeah. And you get two free drink pours at the end of the tour. Yeah, we, we're actually enhancing our tour experience. Um, so for now, it's what you're saying. We offer our tours on Saturdays, um, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. You get a tour and you basically get a pint glass and a beer. Um, but we're kind of taking it to the next level. So Ooh. come March, we're still kind of figuring out some details. But the tour is going to also include a beer tasting, a guided beer tasting. Um, our brewmaster may do them sometimes. So you would be, Chris, huh? yeah, you would right. be potentially getting you know, a tasting led by um, just people within the industry who know a lot about what they're talking about. Um, so, yeah, we're we're still kind of figuring out a couple details for that but the idea is that that'll launch soon hopefully march um and every month it'll be kind of a little bit different and we'll wow, focus cool. each tour on whether it's a specific beer style or um just beer topics that i think people are generally interested in or want to learn more about so that's in the plans but, that's yeah that's so awesome and I, still will include a tour bar facility so so obviously, okay, so Heavy Seas, you are the largest beer brewery manufacturer here in the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. I'm right. Is my math adding up? We can say that now. Yes. Okay. Congratulations, <laughs> by the way. So what, what does Heavy Seas do to kind of give back to the Maryland community? I know you guys are very involved in the community, do a lot of events. So like what sort of specific things might the average beer drinker not know that Heavy Seas does for the Maryland community? Yeah, we've, I mean, over our, like since our founding, we've done a lot of different things. Um, we do feel very strongly about giving back to our community in kind of whatever capacity that could be. So we we work with a lot of um, local charity groups or other organizations on um, different fundraising events. Um, in our tap room specifically, a lot of times what we'll do is um, kind of call it pints for a purpose. So we might be hosting a fundraising event where people can attend and for the duration of that event you know we're going to be donating a portion of every pint sold back to that particular cause uh, awesome. we have a cool we have a couple cool events already lined up for this year which uh we haven't started promoting yet but soon um but we have a really good relationship with barks um we, i'm sorry you were telling me you're doing an event for Barks. yeah we do a collaboration event every year with barks um where <laughs> it's it's fun Basically, we do a, a contest where, you know, people can submit photos of their pets um, and there is a small fee associated with it, but all the proceeds go to go to Barks. Um, and then 
they barks will pick a winner a dog and a cat and we'll feature them on a can label for a collaboration beer that we brew with barks so, so my cat could be on a can of your beer. cat could be wow i need to get photographed and i yeah. guess all right um, but yeah so we've done a lot of different things over the years it's it's all very rewarding and um just we try to be a part how, however we can play our role that's awesome now okay so one thing i want to talk to you about right because obviously it seems that the craft beer industry here in Maryland is it's struggling. Unfortunately, you hear about these breweries going out left and right. It's yeah. it's so sad because they're great people with great ambitions that unfortunately just didn't make it, right? And now while they are your competitors, mm -hmm. I have to imagine that you guys don't want to see these breweries fail. So like, what's that relationship like with other brewers? And I know you guys have done some collabs and stuff like that, right? You, yeah, we, Black our Blackbeard's breakfast. breakfast um, we collabed with Chesapeake Coffee Roasters on that. Um, their dark Sumatra coffee is amazing. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's been a very interesting last few years in the beer industry. Um, and I, I say that nationally too, not just within Maryland. I mean, COVID was not kind to anyone, but like specifically food Bev. Um, I mean, we had to stay at home. So half of our business is draft beer that people can drink at bars and restaurants. And when bars and restaurants were closed, I mean, that's, that's gonna hurt anyone. Um, how, how hard was it to actually uh, stay? Because you guys were open where you come in and get like takeout beverages and mm -hmm. beer and alcohol, right? Was that was that a pain in the butt to deal with with the state to open no, on COVID for that? They, uh, the state actually did put a few uh, bills in place during COVID to help, you know, make that uh, available for breweries. So we were able to sell beer to go. Um, some breweries uh, actually were able to to deliver beer to customers too. Um, so yeah i mean it was a struggle and i would be lying to say that now that we're you know out of covid things are back to normal because we're we're still kind of dealing with that yeah the, the it's still a thing I yeah mean, it's not like it went away but yeah so it, it's been a struggle it has never been harder to sell beer mm -hmm. um and over the last 10 15 years just the number of craft breweries within just not only maryland the country i mean it the industry has grown right there's a ton of suppliers. Um, everyone, you know, is just trying to do what they can to, to stand out, make good beer. Um, and yeah, we're in the beer selling business. We're yeah. trying to, you know, I th we've weathered the storm and, and we're still uh, doing what, what we love to do. And we're very fortunate. Um, and it is sad when you hear of a, a fellow brewery in the state that's closing and, um, I don't know if it's going to continue. Who knows? But yeah. I, I just think it's that oversaturation. Like every day I'm hearing about a new brewery opening up and unfortunately another one closing. Right. And it's sad when you hear about the ones closing. Um, but it's awful. Yeah, it is. Uh, there's so many people that are like, oh, have you been to this place? And I'm like, no, I haven't even heard of it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's new. I'm like, oh. I think collectively, I'm very happy with how the industry is in Maryland. I mean, we have a lot of great breweries here. Um, I have a lot of friends at a lot of these breweries and I, I will say, even though we are all in the beer selling business and yeah, we're competitors, but it is a pretty friendly industry. Um, to your point, you mentioned collaborations. I mean, we've done collaboration brews with, with union. Um, we've had some discussions with firm recently about a collaboration brew, maybe this year slate farm, I think is one we might pursue this year. Um, so it is a friendly industry and, and you the, guys do a lot of contract brewing too, right? We do some contract brewing for a few brands in the state. Um, and I've, I've said this on other interviews before too. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, I can respect the craft. Mm -hmm. So if I'm at an event and I'm tasting another brewery's IPA or another one of their beers and it's good, like I give credit where credit is due. Right, right. Um, yeah. So we, I think, and I think that sentiment is shared. Like, I think we all can respect each other's craft and um, respect that for sure. I'm going to put you on the spot, right? Yeah. So what is your favorite non-Heavy Seas beer? 